All right, hey everybody, my name is Brandon Duarte. I am a software engineer here at Tormach, and I'm excited today to share with you some of the latest features in our Pathpilot robot uh, release version that we just released over the past couple of weeks. Let's jump into some of the uh, new major features of the latest Pathpilot release. Um, as with, you know, in general, our philosophy with Pathpilot for the robot is to continue to provide you reliable and easy to use software, really to help you get things done faster. And really the features that I'm gonna to show to you today really personify those uh, principles for PathPilot. And the first one that I wanna show uh, has to do with the ZA6 here and the overall ARM configuration for the robot and the level of control that you have with the ZA6. So the best way to show you this new functionality is I think directly on the robot itself. So first I'm gonna show you the robot moving between two waypoints. And uh, to kick us off, I'm gonna show you the default behavior for the robot. Um, and then I'll show you with the added uh, control added on afterwards. So here is the robot just moving between two waypoints in space. Keep particular attention to the overall just arm configuration, where each join is as it kind of smoothly moves between those two waypoints. And now what I want to do is constrain or tell the robot exactly how I want to move it in space. And this is with the new ARM constraint configuration that we've added to PathPilot and the Tormach robot programming language. So I'm gonna jump in here and update the overall robot movement with uh, an ARM constraint around the fourth joint of the ZA6. And you'll notice that the robot moves a bit different in this case, because I've told it exactly how I want that arm to be configured as it moves through space. As you can see, that joint four is now rotating as it moves between those two points. This can be particularly useful um, as you're thinking about how your robot is tending to the space requirements around it. So for example, if we look at something like a machine tending use case, you might want to make sure that the robot is moving in and out of that enclosure um, in a very specific way so that it doesn't necessarily crash into the side of the um, into the side of the mill as you're trying to tend uh, the mill itself. Really our goal with this is to really give you that fine level detail of control of the robot. Um, and we're really excited for you all to get this into your hands and to um, really put it to good use for your um, various applications. Now let me show you how I did that directly in code. It's really easy. So I'm gonna jump into PathPilot here um, and take a look at the program that we're using to move between two waypoints. So you can see, um, basically all I have here are two waypoints that are defined with two, move, uh, two joint moves between those two waypoints. Now, to add these ARM configuration constraints, all I need to do is when I define the waypoint, I want to define exactly what that ARM orientation is going to be when the robot gets to that particular waypoint. And I can do that directly through the waypoint definition here. Um, I'm just going to add in the acronym FUT uh, for waypoint one and NUT for waypoint two. And what this is going to tell uh, the ZA6 to do is that as it approaches that waypoint, it needs to make sure it is in a wrist flipped orientation or a wrist not flipped orientation. And so just by updating this waypoint here, uh, these two waypoints, the robot now knows exactly what orientation it needs to be in when it gets to that particular waypoint forcing it into that particular ARM configuration. Now that we talked a bit about ARM configurations, um, I wanna show you some of the newer, other new things that are going on directly within PathPilot itself. One of the things that you'll notice is our new look and feel for the robot preview window. Um, overall, aesthetically, we've improved the aesthetics, but um, you'll also notice things like the grid that's also alongside the robot here, really giving you more spatial awareness about where that robot is in space. We've also added, um, updated the overall look and feel of the jog panel as well when it comes to the robot preview. So based on some feedback that you all provided to us, uh, we actually flipped the overall style of the robot's current position and the robot's target jog position, uh, really trying to make it more clear about where the robot is uh, at this current point in time. So thank you for that feedback. The other large feature that we introduced to uh, the robot preview as well is the uh, waypoint preview. So now, directly within the robot preview window, you can see where your waypoints you have defined in space relative to the robot. This applies both for the program waypoints that you've defined in your loaded robot program, but also any global waypoints that you've defined as well. 
So here you can actually see the two waypoints that we were moving between uh, as we were talking through the ARM configurations, both waypoint one and waypoint two, represented by these cubes here. And I have control over these two, so if I don't necessarily want to see them right now, I can hide them or show them um, as appropriate. One of the things that this is really nice for is not only uh, making it really clear where in space the robot might be moving to, but it can also help you debug your programs as well. So what you'll actually see is I also have a third waypoint defined in this program as well, sitting way up here in space. And that actually doesn't look quite right to me. The robot's not actually going to be able to get to that waypoint. So I can jump into the code here and make an update. It looks like I added an extra zero to the Z uh, axis for that waypoint. And I can bring it back down to where it's supposed to be, um, making it really easy for me to identify um, where I'm planning to move that robot before I even hit cycle start. This also applies to jogging as well. So if I go to my waypoints and I want to move to a particular waypoint with the go to waypoint functionality, I can also see that specific waypoint that I'm moving to highlighted directly in the preview window as well. So I know exactly where that robot's going to go when I hit hold to move. Now you may have noticed uh, something else new in Pathpilot as I was walking through uh, that the robot preview changes. And it's actually this new control down here in the bottom right corner called run sub program. This can be really useful for you to make it easy to take action with the robot based on any loaded sub programs that you have embedded within your actively loaded program. Oftentimes when you're working with large complicated robot programs, um, you will often want to break down the tasks that the robot is taking into small bite-sized chunks that are really easy to work with. For example, if you're designing a machine tending program where you might be picking up a piece of stock, moving to the enclosure, waiting, dropping that stock off, picking your part up and moving back to pick up a new piece, you're going to want to break that down into those individual actions to make the robot to make working with the robot um, that much easier. This can be challenging though from a development process. Um, oftentimes how, how you might design this today is you'll break each of those actions out into their own individual files that you would load individually if you wanted to test out a particular action or maybe you just want to make the robot move quickly from uh, you need to get it away from their enclosure so you move it away uh, to the table instead. And this requires you to load a different file, hit cycle start, wait for it to happen, load your original file as well. With the run sub program button you're, you're now able to take specific actions that you've defined in your loaded uh, program and run those independently as if it was the only thing that you're running. So now you don't necessarily need to break your complicated program into all these small files that you can take action on independently. You can just have one machine tending program and run pieces independently as you test and um, take action with the robot. So what I'm going to do is here I have a very simple program just to illustrate how this functionality works. That the robot is going to move between uh, the table, a, point, a waypoint I've defined at the table, and a waypoint that I've defined over there by the enclosure. And these are all defined as individual functions within the particular uh, robot program that I currently have loaded. So if I run this program as is, this robot is going to move from the table back to the enclosure um, and run that whole sequence that I've have, I have defined for the robot in this machine tending workflow. However, Maybe I just want to move the robot back to the table and not have it go through the whole iterative process of the machine tendering workflow. So using the run sub program button, I have a couple options here that I can take based on how I've structured my program. I can move to table, move to enclosure, or I can run my pick and place function. In this case, I just want to move the robot back to the table. So I can just select move to table and click run sub program, and it's going to move back to the table and do nothing else. So this is really useful for me if I just want to take that one individual action and run it in isolation, either to do some testing or just to get the robot out of the way. Making it even easier for you to interact with your overall robot programs um, and making it much easier for you to manage the overall um, structure of your robot programs as you start diving into some more of these complicated topics. All right, let's talk a little bit about some of the more minor features coming to you in the latest Pathpilot robot release. 
Overall, our goal, as I said, is to make Pathbot more of a joy to use and just generally easier for you to interact with and streamline it as much as possible to help you get things done faster. And this first one is really in that vein of saving you clicks and time as you're working with more complicated robot programs. So as I mentioned before, oftentimes when you're working with those complicated programs is you might have multiple files that you're dealing with for the robot programs, importing them, maybe have some complicated dependencies that you're pulling in. And you might be making updates to all these different files. Now, the program interpreter is actually much smarter, and it can automatically pull in those dependencies as you make changes to them, saving you time and energy from having to go um, make those changes, go to the settings page, reload the interpreter, go through all those actions. Um, now, we'll just automatically do that for you, which will save you time and energy as you're working with those complicated programs. Whoa! You can now hit Escape to stop robot motion. We've also been hard at work adding additional robot example programs directly on the controller itself. So historically, you've been able to access those example programs through our Tormach GitHub account, uh, which we'll put a link down in the description below. And there's all kinds of other additional examples there that you might be interested in. But we're also putting those examples directly on the controller itself so that they're easier to access and for you to test out some of the capabilities of the Tormach Robot Programming Language, or TRPL. We've also been expanding the capabilities of TRPL, um, providing you new ways to interact with the robot programmatically. In particular, we added two new functions, one to get the active user frame, as well as uh, a function to get the active tool frame that you can embed directly into your robot programs. And with these changes um, of those new functions, as well as all the things that I've talked about today, we've updated our TL TRPL documentation to include all those changes so you can reference them when you're writing your programs. And this was just a taste of some of the new features that came out in the latest Pathpilot release. We, with all of our releases, we also provide release notes so that will highlight additional changes that came. Um, so definitely recommend that you check it out. Um, thank you for joining us today. Um, we definitely look forward to all your feedback, any questions or comments that you might have. Feel free to leave them down below in the comments section. Um, we love hearing from you and look forward to hear how you're able to take advantage of some of the things that we talked about today. Thanks.